Greetings. I'm Mr. French. I'm coming to you from my classroom in Mount Pleasant, Utah. And this is topic 3.5, selecting procedures for calculating derivatives from the AP Calculus AP Classroom Curriculum. So we have discovered a lot of different functions and different situations where we can take a derivative to help us explain the instantaneous rate of change or the behavior of a relationship between X and Y. Um, so let's just dive right into some examples to start thinking about what types of procedures we would need in any particular situation. Here's our first example. Which of the following does not require the use of the chain rule to find dy dx? Well, to use the chain rule means that we would be looking at a composite function. So we want to see whether any of these functions are not composite functions. Well, if we look at our first example, here we've got the inverse sine of 3x cubed minus 4x squared. And that of right here tells me that this is a composite function. So we definitely would need the chain rule where the inside function would be 3x cubed minus 4x squared, and my outside operation would be the inverse sine. In this second example, 3x to the 8th minus 4y to the 7th equals x cubed y minus 4. Again, I would need the chain rule here for this y to the 7th expression, because y to the 7th is really f of x, an inside function raised to the seventh power. This third example, y equals x to the one fourth minus four over x cubed plus x to the seventh. Each of these terms is a standard power term expression. So I don't need the chain rule here. This is simply a power function for y. This last function, natural log of x minus y plus the cosine of 2y plus pi over 4 equals 2. There were two places in this verbal expression of this relationship where I had to say of. And then instead of just saying of x, I had an expression I needed to also take the derivative of. The natural log of x minus y and the cosine of 2y. Both of these would require an application of the chain rule before I could finally find dy dx. Here's another example. The table below gives selected values for a differ differentiable and increasing function f and its derivative. Let g be the increasing function defined below, where g of 3 equals f of 12 minus f of 9 equals negative 2. So I need to find g inverse of negative 2. Well, to find g inverse of negative 2, since g of 3 equals negative 2, then it stands to reason that the whatever g prime of 3 is, that g inverse of negative 2 would be 1 over that answer. So let's find what g inverse of 3 is. Well, g inverse of 3 is going to be, first I need to find g prime, or g prime of 3, not g inverse. So g prime of x is going to require the application of a chain rule if this is my expression for g. The derivative of f of 4 of x is going to be f prime, the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of 4x. And then my derivative of f of 3x is going to be f prime, leave the inside alone, 3x, times the derivative of the inside, or 3. So let's see. F, if x equals 3 for g, well, then I am looking for g prime of 3 is going to be 4 times f prime of 
4 times 3, or 12, minus f prime of 3 times 3, or 9, times 3. Well, from the table, f prime of 12 is 5. So this would be 4 times 5 minus f prime of 9, which is 4, times 3. So that gives me 20 minus 12, or 8. Because our derivative of f of 4x with f prime of 4x times 4. Let's look at one more example. What does the first step in the implicit differentiation process for the function below look like? OK, so here we've got a lot of stuff going on. I have the inverse cosine of x cubed minus 2y squared. And on the right-hand side, I've got the natural log of x plus y minus 4x to the third. So if I look at the inverse cosine of x cubed minus 2y squared, well, I know that that's going to be a chain rule application using the inverse cosine derivative, which is going to be negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, but the x in this case is this whole expression, x cubed minus 2y squared, all squared. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x cubed is just 3x squared. And the derivative of 2y squared is going to be, using the power rule and the chain rule, 4y to the first times y prime. Now I have to apply my rules to the right-hand side. The derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over the something, so 1 over x plus y, times the derivative of the something. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of y is y prime, or dy dx. And then I'm subtracting the derivative of 4 over x cubed, 4 over x cubed could also be written as 4 to the negative 3. So I bring down the negative 3, and this actually becomes a positive 12x to the negative 4. And that's what our first step would look like before we solved for y prime. You can see that in my alternative answer on my y primes are dy dx's. All right, so those are our examples. Remember to be aware that the chain rule is going to appear almost every time you take the derivative of a function. Be on the lookout for it.